Hello, welcome to Learning Every Day with me, Lisa Aaron. This channel will benefit teachers, homeschoolers, and students of all ages. I'm here to help you learn. Join our learning circle and subscribe. Is it a sentence? Recall that a sentence has two parts, a naming part and action part. If one of the parts is missing, the group of words is not a sentence and needs to be corrected. Number one, Bonnie Thomas paints. Is there a naming part? Bonnie Thomas. Is there an action part? Paints. It is correct. Number two, paints pictures of flowers. Is there a naming part? Who paints pictures? We do not know, so this is wrong. It does have the action part because it has paints. We know somebody is painting pictures, but we don't know who, so that is not a complete sentence. Number three, this girl spends hours on her artwork. Is there a naming part? By the way, the naming part is called the subject. Is there a subject? Yes, it's the girl. What does she do? She spends hours. This is a sentence. Number four, my big sister Bonnie Lou, is there a naming part or a subject? It's Bonnie Lou. What does Bonnie Lou do? There is no action. This is not a sentence. Number five, like her paintings very much. Is there a subject or a naming part? It is not her. There is not. Is there an action part or a verb? Yes, it's like, but it's not a sentence because there's no subject or naming part. Six, my mom, my brother, and me. Is there a naming or subjects? Yes, mom, brother, and me. Is there an action part or a verb? No, so this is not a complete sentence. What is a paragraph? A paragraph is a short piece of writing that has a beginning, middle, and end about one idea. Every story, essay, article, or book is made of a little paragraphs to create a whole literary work. Paragraph structure. A paragraph has three parts. A topic sentence tells the main idea. It's usually at the beginning sentence. For school at this time, we're gonna use our topic sentence at the beginning. Detailed sentences explain and support the main ideas. Conclusion sentence, explain and support the main ideas, reminds us of the main idea and the topic sentence. Note, you indent a paragraph to show a new thought to the reader. The beginning. When you talk to your friends, you begin by getting their interest. You might say, hey, guess what? Or you won't believe this. Then you let them know what it is that you are going to talk about. I saw something yesterday that you will want to know about. The very first sentence of your paragraph is called the topic sentence. A topic sentence tells what your paragraph will be about and will encourage the reader to want to read. The middle. After you have your friend's attention, you tell them the details. In your paragraph, the sentence that follow your topic sentence, also known as body sentences add interesting details, and explain what you mean. Each sentence needs to be about your topic. If the topic is your talking dog, you won't have sentences telling about your math test. Example, my dog knows how to say mama. The end. The last sentence of your paragraph is the concluding sentence or closing sentence. This sentence will remind your reader of what you are writing about and what it means to you. You might end your paragraph about your talking dog by saying, it may not seem like he is talking like humans do, but if you listen closely and have some food, you will hear the words and you will be amazed. Remember, every paragraph, just like every story or book, has a beginning, middle, and end. How to brainstorm. Thinking of new ideas is like having a storm in your brain. You need to write the ideas before they flash and disappear. You can brainstorm by yourself, with the class, your friends, or your parents. Here's how to do it. Number one, write down all the ideas. Two, don't think about whether you like them or not. 
Just write them down. Three, let your ideas come out. Your ideas don't need to make sense at this moment. Four, when you are finished and no more ideas are coming, look at your ideas and circle the ones you like best. Here is an example of brainstorming ideas. After school, all summer long, play clothes, toys, baseball, basketball, dolls, silly, laughing, jumping, exciting, friends, backyard, park, swimming pool, slides, jungle gym, recess, jump rope, hopscotch. Brainstorm for ideas. Keep a notebook. Ask yourself questions about things you question and ideas. Use a K. WL chart listing what I know, what I want to know, and what I learned. Make a web. Here's one about animals. Are they vertebrae, nocturnal, mammal, marsupial? So this is a web for creating a whole paper. Not just a paragraph, but a whole paper. First you need to make a plan. This web is about a day at the zoo. That is the theme of the paper. And then it's broken down into the paragraphs. The first paragraph would be getting there. It might talk about what to bring, the shoes, the bus ride, a camera. Another paragraph would be about the animals, what animals you saw at the zoos, snakes, lions, monkeys, zebras, elephants. Another paragraph would be possibly lunch, what you ate and the free time you had, maybe you went to the gift shop. And then the last paragraph would be going home. In this cluster diagram, we're talking about dinosaurs. It could be sequencing, when the dinosaurs lived, a comparison, two kinds of dinosaurs, a description, name and descriptions of the dinosaurs, a problem and solution, how scientists learned about dinosaurs, cause and effect, why the dinosaurs died. Examples of paragraphs with good structure. Here's a paragraph as an example. I'm going to show you the elements of this paragraph. The title is Animals with Shells. Many animals have shells. That's our topic sentence. A shell is a hard covering. That's part of our body sentences. Everyone knows the turtle has a bony shell, but many other animals have shells. Some mullocks have circle-shaped shells that are pearly on the inside. Oysters have very rough shells. Lobsters and shrimp are other sea animals with shells. As you can see, many animals have shells. That is our closing sentence. Here's another paragraph, pond animals. There are many animals at the pond. That's our topic sentence. They like to be there for different reasons. These are our body sentences. Many frogs live at that pond. They jump from rock to rock. They swim through the water. Most of the time, they are looking for something to eat. More body sentences. Snails like the muddy places around the pond. They live in fresh water. They crawl along with their shells on their backs. Their shells are coiled. The mud feels soft and cool to keep them moist. More body sentences. Sometimes boys and girls are at the pond. They skip rocks on the water. They catch tadpoles in a jar. Sometimes they even wade in the water. You see why the pond is a nice place to be? That's our closing sentence. I want you to notice that every paragraph that is indented, remember to indent your paragraphs, but they stick to a specific topic. The first paragraph talks about the reasons why many frogs live in a pond. The second paragraph is talking about snails and why they like the pond. The third paragraph tells why boys and girls like the pond too. A paragraph should tell the reader about one idea. Examples of one main ideas. Cartoons on Saturday, movies, favorite show, pizza, french fries, nuggets, trains, squirt guns, basketball. The first example talks about things on television. The second line talks about favorite foods. The third line speaks of favorite toys. Sticking to the point of the main idea, some sentences do not belong or keep to the main idea. Here's an example. Camping is fun. It's fun to sleep outside or in a tent. 
The most popular sport on my street is soccer. Food tastes better when it's been cooked over a fire. We make s'mores with graham crackers, marshmallows, and chocolate. I can play outside after I clean up my room. Sometimes we might see a deer from our campsite. Do you see how jumbled the thoughts are? That's why it's important to stick to one topic as you write each paragraph, and it's important to indent to let the reader know your thoughts are changing. Now let's read this paragraph. Camping is fun. It's fun to sleep outside or in a tent. Food tastes better when it has been cooked over a fire. We make s'mores with graham crackers and marshmallows and chocolate. Sometimes we might see a deer from our campsite. Do you hear how much better that sounds because we're sticking to one topic? Write a topic sentence for each provide a main idea word used for the possible paragraph. 1. Vegetables. Vegetables are yucky. 2. Cats. I like to hear cats purr. 3. Books. My favorite story is Cinderella. 4. Music. What did you think of? What about 5. Cars. Topic sentences. 1. I love dessert. 2. I like to run. 3. I like to wear fancy shoes. 4. The outside deer is entertaining. 5. It's not good to eat too much. There are so many choices. There's ice cream, cake, pies, and cookies. I think brownies are my favorite. I wish I could just eat only desserts and never spinach. What would be the right top sentence? Looking at the list we had above. I love dessert. I like to run. I like to wear fancy shoes. The outside deer is entertaining. Or it's not a good idea to eat too much. I love dessert. There are so many choices. There's ice cream, cake, pie, and cookies. I think brownies are my favorite. I wish I could just eat only desserts and never spinach. Let's see this one. I can see him eating bark off the trees. Sometimes in the daytime, he goes into the garden and eats my mom's daisies. His tracks can be found in the yard. I ask for extra carrots to feed my deer. I love watching the deer. The topic sentence would be, the outside deer is entertaining. It talks about why the deer is entertaining. I can see him eating bark. He goes in the garden and eats my mom's daisy. His tracks can be found in the yard. I love watching the deer. What about this paragraph? These shoes make me feel beautiful. I can see my painted toes. The heels give me height to reach the things I couldn't reach before. I can't wait to go somewhere special to show off my favorite shoes. Remember the topic sentences? A good one would be, I like to wear fancy shoes. And it explains why. Because it makes her feel beautiful. She can see her painted toes. The heels give her height and she can go somewhere special and show them off. Topic sentences. One, I crushed a car. Two, I thought the bathtub would be a good place to keep my frog. Three, my sister wanted to eat a bug. All right, here, I'm going to read the paragraph. I didn't mean to do it. I was running into the house, and my little brother's tiny plastic car was in the way. I accidentally stepped on it and crushed it. He was mad and cried. I have to buy him a new one with my allowance. I will be more careful next time. What is the topic sentence? You got it. I crushed a car. What about this paragraph? What is the topic sentence? She crawled on a blanket in the backyard and picked up the plastic blocks and chewed on them. When she saw a bug crawl into the blanket, she dropped the plastic block and started to reach for the bug. I was just watching, but my mom ran out and grabbed the bug and tossed it into the bushes. My sister wanted to eat a bug. What about this paragraph? When I heard my mom scream, she came out of the, her bathrobe and yelled, Who put a frog at the bathtub? I tried to explain that it just had to stay there until Monday when I would take it to school, but she made me scrub the bathtub. I guess it wasn't such a good idea. I thought the bathtub would be a good place to keep my frog. That's the topic sentence. Topic sentences. I would like a tree house in my backyard for three reasons. I like cats for the following four reasons. There are three reasons I would not eat a snail even for $100. Idea bank for body sentences about my friend. He talks funny. I've never seen him eat food. 
I've never seen him cry. I don't think he has a tongue. One of my friends is really a robot. I think he is a robot because, give the reasons, he talks funny. I don't think he has a tongue. It's also strange that I never seen him cry. I never seen him eat food. I'm sure he's a robot. This body of paragraph is missing. I would like to live near Disneyland for three reasons. The first reason is give your reason. Another reason is these are called transitions. Another reason that's a transition. Give your reason. And the word finally, that's another transition. Finally, if I lived in Disneyland, give your reason. And then your concluding sentence, I would love to live in Disneyland. That's how you kind of get your thoughts moving along when you're writing a paragraph. The ending. Every story has an ending, and so do paragraphs. The last sentence, or the last few sentences of a paragraph is called the closing sentence, or the conclusion. All you need to remember is to finish your paragraph with a feeling, a thought, an attitude, or a point you want to make. Here is a paragraph that has no ending. I like to go to the store with my mom. I get to pick out the apples. I also get to choose a cereal just for me. I like to smell the peaches. Here are some endings that might work for this unfinished paragraph. I get so hungry at the store, I can't wait to bring the food home. My mom lets me pick out some peaches, and then we go home and make a fruit salad. After we finish, my mom lets me get some gum before we go home. I help put the food in the bags, and then we take it all home. Which of these sentences would you use for the end as the conclusion? The order of ideas. You can put things in order as they happen in time, called chronological order. When explaining directions or recipes, you always use chronological order. Chronological order. Mornings. Go to school. Wake up. Eat breakfast. Do you see it's not in order? If you were to put your paragraph starting with going to school and then waking up, it would confuse the reader. Chronological order needs to make sense. Baking a cake. Put it in the oven. Pour the batter in the pan. Mix the batter. You see how that's not the order of making a cake? You need to put things in chronological order so the reader can follow along easily and understand what you're writing about. Going to camp. Get on the bus. Kiss parents goodbye. Pack a bag. You may pack your bag, kiss your parents goodbye, and then get on the bus. That would be the right order for going to camp. How about eating cereal? Get the bowl, pour the milk, pour the cereal, no, the milk doesn't go before the cereal. You get the bowl, then you pour the cereal, and then you pour the milk. Chronological order is very important to follow, so your reader can follow along, and it makes sense. When you hear someone talk, it might go like this. I got in line for the elephant ride, and then I waited. And pretty soon, it was my turn. I tried to get up on the elephant, but I couldn't reach. Next, I was on top of the elephant and suddenly it started to walk. I was frightened, so I started yelling, stop, but then the elephant just went faster. I started to cry, and the man came over. The man said that I scared the elephant when I yelled, and then he brought the elephant and me back to the start. Finally, I climbed off the elephant, and as soon as I got back to my mom, I told her that I scared the elephant, and she started to laugh. All the underlined words connect the things that happened in the story. They are words like, and so, first, suddenly, today, and then, and finally. These are connecting words or transitions. Today I woke up early, and then I brushed my teeth. Next I put my homework in my backpack, and then I put my books in too. I ate breakfast, and then I noticed that it was really quiet. First I went to my mom's room, but she was still sleeping. Next I went to my brother's room, but he was really asleep. After that, I went to the porch, and even the dog was still sleeping. Suddenly, I remembered it was Saturday, so I went back to bed. Let's look for the transitions in this paragraph, and then, next, and then, 
But then, first, next, after that, suddenly. These are examples of some topics that you could write about, and you can begin by using transitions in this order. First, next, then, and finally, transitions. But it helps the paragraph flow. It helps the reader to follow along and connect and, and add chronological order. There are four main types of writing styles. Narrative, expository, descriptive, and persuasive. Before writing, you have to decide your purpose of writing. We'll go into these four types in a moment. And it'll, you'll be able to pick your type of story and type of style you'd want to write, depending on what your story is about. Narrative paragraph, telling or writing about an experience or event in a detailed story form is called a narrative. It tells what happened in chronological order. The characters use dialogue. Narrative has a beginning, middle, and end. There are situations, actions, motivational events, disputes, or other conflicts that resolve. It is used in fictional stories, plays, and personal essays, autobiographies, biographies, and anecdotes. A narrative, always remember it goes in a chronological order. It tells a story. It's an example of a narrative. A paragraph is like a mini story that has a beginning, middle, and end. The beginning, the first sentence of the paragraph, remember, is called a topic sentence because it tells what the paragraph is about. Example, my dog thinks she is a human. The middle, all of the sentences that come after the topic sentence tell more about the topic. First of all, she can open doors. She jumps up and opens the door with her paws, and then she walks into the house to see if there is anything to eat. After that, she makes herself comfortable on the couch. This story goes in a chronological order. It's an example of a narrative. The end, the last sentence of your paragraph, is your closing or conclusion. This sentence can say what the paragraph is about and tell what it means to you. And so my dog thinks she is human, and I haven't told her that she is a dog because I don't want to hurt her feelings. Here's expository type of paragraph. When you write a paragraph that gives facts, explains ideas, or gives directions, you are writing an expository paragraph. Expository means the writing that exposes or explains something in order and sequence. Newspaper writing is expository. Research reports, recipes, directions, and a letter to your parents explaining why you should be able to stay up later. This writing may make comparisons or clarifications, often using facts and figures. A paragraph that explains. An explanation tells why something happens. This reasons for facts are often arranged in order of importance. The steps are arranged in time order. Expository writing is lacking a descriptive detail and opinion. Example of an expository paragraph, the sound of the violin. This is how the sound is made from a violin. The violin is made of wood. It is hollow inside. There are four strings strung from one end of the violin to the other. The violin bow is made of horse hair. When you move the hairs of the bow across the strings of the violin, it makes the strings vibrate. The vibration makes a sound in the soundboard inside the violin. The sound comes out of two sound holes. You can control which sound or note make it by pressing down the different strings. Expository topics. Tell how to take a bath. Give the facts about your favorite book or cartoon character, explain how to skate, tell the facts about your pet, share how to bake a birthday cake, tell why you like ice cream, explain how to make a peanut butter sandwich, tell how to play your favorite game, explain the rules of your favorite sport. These are all topics of explanation. When you explain something, you're writing an expository paragraph. Now, the third type is a descriptive paragraph. A descriptive paragraph paints a picture of what things look, smell, taste, feel, and sound like. It focuses on one subject and uses a specific detail to picture it. It describes places, people, events, or locations in a detailed manner. Descriptive writing is used in poetry, journal writing, 
descriptive passages of fiction. Examples of a descriptive paragraph. Ferris wheels. Ferris wheels are a lot of fun. They are here when the carnival comes to town. They are fun because they go really high and you can see everyone below who now look so small from way up above. Ferris wheels are exciting because they go around and around and you can feel the rush of air on your face. They're a bright light that change color from yellow, red, and green. I feel like a bird on a Ferris wheel. Some of the paragraphs are descriptive and some are not. Here are some examples. My dog is in the backyard. I'm in the house. My sister is doing her homework. I want to go outside and play with my dog, but first I have to finish eating my peas. Reads like a list. Not a very good paragraph. Boring. No main idea. No transitions. How about this paragraph? My dog is a golden retriever named Buddy. While everyone in my house is busy, I like to go outside and play fetch with him. Buddy is so funny. When I throw the frisbee, he will jump so high. Then he will run fast to bring it back to me. He gets so excited. He barks and wags his tail to show he is having fun. He tries to grab the frisbee away from me. Sometimes we have a tug of war with it. I love playing outdoors with my dog. What do you think of this paragraph? It will soon be my birthday. I want a skateboard and a helmet. I will have a cake and some ice cream. My friends will come over and spend the night. Reads like a list. Boring. No transitions. No emotional detail. How about this? This should sound better. My seventh birthday is next week. I want a pair of purple and silver rollerblades and a pink thick elbow pads. I'm going to have a banana and chocolate cake with fudge frosting and fudge cherry ice cream. My best friends will come over and stay all night long listening to music and dancing. Another type of writing, this is called persuasive writing. Persuasive writing aims to sway the reader, thinking to the author's point of view. It, this is used in advertising, opinions, editorials, letters of complaint, reviews, and job applications. It is the reasons, arguments, and justifications of a point of view. It often asks for a call for action. Here's a persuasive paragraph. Save the tiger. There were 150,000 tigers roaming the earth 100 years ago, but now there are only 3,800. Tigers are being killed for their beautiful striped skins, claws, and bones. Wild tigers are on the brink of extinction. We can change this by becoming aware and not buying furs. You can watch the film Save the Tigers to gain a better understanding. Together, we can save the tigers. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. This lesson clearly broke down the elements of writing a good paragraph, starting with sentences, whether sentences are complete, a complete thought with a subject and verb, and brainstorming. You need a topic sentence a beginning, middle, and end to your paragraphs. Then your paragraphs need details to support each other. You need to use transitions. You need to decide on the type of paragraph you're going to write. There were four types that we mentioned here, whether it be narrative, expository, descriptive, persuasive, so that you can choose the type of paper you're going to write. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Give me a, a like and a thumbs up and subscribe for more learning. Thank you for watching. Check out these great books to use in your classroom. Yeah.